Good morning, Cypress family. We're thankful to the Lord for another time and another day to come together virtually, come together as the family of God to uh, worship, to commune, <clears throat> to pray together, and to hear word from his word, the Bible. And we are thankful for his blessings. We're thankful and we pray that you are doing well. And we hope that the Lord is continuing to bless your life uh, in as many ways as only he can. And so today we want to welcome all of you from near and far, those of you who are members of the Cypress Church and those of you who are visitors from other states around our country. We thank you for being with us and we pray that through this worship service and our <clears throat> proclamation of God's word, that we can encourage you in one way or another towards God. Today, I want to focus in the <clears throat> book of Isaiah, chapter 55. And I'm going to read verses 6 through 11 for our focus on today and uh, to think about what the Lord would desire of us as we are going even through uh, this pandemic and through these challenging times. Verse number six, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways <clears throat> my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and return not thither, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and prosper in the thing for which it is sent. <clears throat> Today, I want to focus just for a few minutes um, and reflect on the, the words by the prophet Isaiah on the topic or on the ideas of penitence, peace, and prosperity. Penitence, peace, and prosperity. <clears throat> and so I want us to kind of know that uh, you know, Israel had not been responsible, and we'll talk about that as we get into the message, but Isaiah was God's man with, the, with a message for the people of the time. And of course, God is sovereign, and he rules over all in every way. We learned that in a series uh, in, with Hezekiah. We know that God is sovereign, in that, and we know that every nation on earth is subject to him and subject to his rule and his authority over the world. And so as we look at what's happening here in 55 Isaiah, we learn that God is ready to uh, bless those who have, who have come to him with a penitent heart. And as we look at verses one through seven, um, the Lord speaks through Isaiah and then uh, challenges his people <clears throat> that he will establish and keep with them an everlasting covenant. He said, uh, re regarding them, incline your ear and come to me here that your soul may live and I will make you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples. And so as I think about the ideas that God has shared regarding Israel, I think about our time and, 
and, and, and the challenges that we face in this pandemic period. But most importantly, it's important for us to understand that we must seek the Lord during these times. He's always available for us, but we have to make up our minds that we want him in our lives. And so the beginning of the establishment of that idea is that I need to change my mind about God, about who he is, and to bring my life into alignment with him. And so as I hear Isaiah, he says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And so the idea is that um, God has a way through his word to bring us to a repentant or to a penitent place. And that is the place where we are ready to decide to go God's way. Let the wicked, the Bible says, or Isaiah says, let the wicked forsake his way. God's way is covenant loyalty, as we mentioned with, uh, in, in verse number three, as it relates to David. <clears throat> I will make with you an everlasting covenant. And the covenant that God establishes means that as I enter into it, he's going to definitely be faithful, but I must come to that relationship with him as well. He is faithful to the promises he makes and delivers on his word. His purpose for us is life. His word is designed to do just that, to bring us life. As the Bible says on in another occasion, Jesus says, the word I have spoken, they are the words of eternal life. And so understand and appreciate the power of God's word is that it is designed to penetrate the human heart. And the Bible says it in Hebrews 4, in verse number 12. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow and a discerner to, of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. God's word is the living word. It diagnoses the condition of the human heart, which in this case is the mind, the center of the soul, the center of the consciousness, the center of the intellect and decision-making processes in the physical body of man. That's where God is able to cut to the chase and discern within us just what our motivations are and just what we represent in the body that he gave to us to live in this life. His word is that which penetrates the heart. And, it, and, and for those who receive it, it diagnoses the condition and brings purpose and life to those who receive it. It brings us to a penitent state of mind. By penitence, we mean that the heart is, means a change. It's been prepared to change its affections, its convictions, its commitment. And those commitment and affections and changes are rooted in the word of God. And um, it, it, it's a change in the sorrow for our offenses committed against him and what he has called us to in, in this life. This is the power of God's word. As Peter says in 1 Peter 1, 23, you have been born anew. Through God's word, we come to the newness of life in Christ. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. You have been born anew, Peter says, not of perishable seed, but of the imperishable. Through the living and abiding word, of God. 1 Peter 1 23. The reason God's word is powerful is because it, 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 it's reality. It becomes reality in our lives. God's word brings to life man. God's word uh, actively engages us in our heart. His word is an extension of his power. And so in Isaiah 55, uh, where we learn, where we read about Isaiah. God had brought Israel to her knees in captivity, long after Hezekiah, in captivity because of generations of sins. 
We've talked about generational sins. We've talked about decisions that I can make today that can affect my children two and three generations down the line. And so we need to be cognizant and be aware of the decisions that we make. We need to understand and learn as much about life and the choices we make now as we can so that we can understand how it impacts us. I think about this, my ancestors of slaves that came on ships from Africa and other places. Decisions that were made then are decisions that affect me now. And it's important to appreciate how we understand where we are in God's timeline of events. We're here just for a short while. We appear for a little while and then we vanish away. But the word of God will stand forever. And so Isaiah tells us, he did, God took uh, Israel into captivity and he did it to, for it to be an object lesson for the world. Then and now. That rather than to bow to gods, little g gods, that were no God, and idols that stoked materialism, they, the people then, and we, the people now, should seek the Lord's mercy and pardon where we would find the blessings of true life. In this sense. God's thoughts and ways are not the thoughts and ways of man. Who comes up with such notions and ideas as God? Not us. Who does this? Who goes to such lengths to bring about salvation to people to see themselves, at, who see themselves rather as the center of the world and no one else? God wants us to return to him. We learned that in, Isaiah, rather in, in Hezekiah's story, we learned about how God worked providentially and he's always working providentially to help us come to situations and circumstances that cause us to make decisions that we can turn to him for his direction. And so in the salvation that he brings, his word is in my heart. His word is designed to give me opportunity, as Isaiah says, to seek. Seek the Lord to call, call upon him while he is near. To forsake, let the wicked forsake his way and turn to the righteousness of God. And so the principle of sowing and reaping comes into play as we've heard that principle over and over and over again. The principle comes in um, again as God lets us know that my thoughts are not your thoughts. But in verse 10, he says, whereas the rain and the snow come down from heaven and return thither, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish all that which I purpose. And so when God's word comes into your heart and your mind, when it's preached or when it's read, when we chew upon it and meditate on it, when we think about it and we study it and we pray in it and we contemplate it, understand that God is cutting through all the weeds of the objections that we may have against him. And he's trying and seeking to bring us to penitence. We must learn to obey him. And we must learn to follow in his steps. For he is the sovereign Lord of heaven and earth. This is a universal principle as we think about that word of God and the seeds that are planted in the hearts of man. Jesus talked about the sower that went forth to sow. And he spread the word of God and there were different kinds of hearts that received it. But the mind is ready to receive God's word. We just have to decide that we want it. In pandemic times, God has a way of helping us to see that, well, maybe we need to think about him a little bit more than we're thinking about than we thought about him in the past. And appreciate him for who he is and what he has done. God's word is always fulfilled according to his intentions. And just understand, he's not going to break us or bend us to come his way. 
unless we decide that we want to walk in his steps and allow the word to be the lamp unto our feet. And so God's word is planted. The work is done in the environment of the soil of my heart. And it yields the fruit of righteousness, of doing God's will on every level of life. I remember that one of my favorite passages in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 talks about that same principle of sowing and reaping. And so as we listen to him talk there, and we listen to Paul, Paul talks about the principle of sowing and reaping as it pertains to giving. And so the, sowing of, the principle of sowing and reaping goes into every area of our lives. If God's word is planted, it will bring forth fruit of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 9, 10, he who supplied seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your resources. Sound familiar? Well, well, I think Paul got this right from Isaiah 55. And increase the harvest of your righteousness. God is seeking to change us, to bring us into alignment with him and his kingdom and who he is and what he represents. And so the starting point of that is with the word of God and appreciating and obeying that word and understanding that the only way that we can meet God where he needs us to be is through a penitent heart. The second thing is that I want to bring to your mind is this. The understanding of peace. Peace is the work God's word, the, or rather the work of God's word is to bring me to peace with God. There are a lot of miserable people in the world, but it's not because of the misery around them. It's probably because of the misery within them. When people obey God, they find peace with him. They find peace with others, and they find peace within themselves. Peace is a condition of freedom from strife, internal and external. It is the calm of heart for those trusting in the Lord. Peace is what God wants for all of us. Peace of mind, peace that passes all understanding in a troubled world is a priceless possession. Penitence leads to faith. And if faith is founded on God's word, this is what faith will do. It brings us peace with God because we are right in our own heart with God. Peace is the gift of Christ because it brings reconciliation with God. John 14, Jesus says, I bring my peace and my peace I give to you. John 14, 27. Paul talks about peace that passes all understanding in Philippians. Let me see if I can get it. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 7. Let me see real quick here. Philippians 4 verse 7, verse number 7. Paul talks about that notion of peace. I just want to mention it here. Re, uh, where he says in, in verse 4, rejoice uh, in the Lord and rejoice. Let all men know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving in your, uh, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts. Understand that when we say heart, and he says it, your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so we need to understand that that peace that comes with Jesus is a peace that settles us in our hearts, and it's a peace that settles us in our relationship with God. That's the peace that you want to have, the peace that says I'm justified. The peace that says that I'm on the way of being sanctified and, and the peace that says that I'm on the, the, the road to being glorified with God. And so when we read in... Romans chapter 5 and verse number 1, the Bible says, 
Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you want peace with God so that you can have peace with your neighbor and so that you can have peace with yourself, then you need to know Jesus. And you need to know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins. Jesus is the answer and Jesus is the way and there's no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved. Peace is the result of faith in Christ. For he is my peace in the midst of a world filled with trial and trouble. Faith helps me to understand who God is and what he is capable of achieving in my life if I trust and obey. Faith means that I understand that God will fight for me. God will fend for me. God will focus, rather, and my focus needs to be that I trust in the Lord with all my heart and with all my understanding. In all my ways, I acknowledge him and I know that he will direct my steps. Trust is to rely on him. We learned from Hezekiah, trust him for what he has promised to deliver. His work is to deliver me in that which he does in my heart and my life. And so as I come to the Lord with a penitent spirit, ready and willing to change and to move where God wants me to be, I know that he can bring me peace. And when he brings me peace, it will be peace that passes all understanding. I don't care what's going on in the world. I am at peace with God. And when you have peace with God, then you can go on to having joy in your heart. But let me just get to the next thought. And so we're talking about penitence, peace, and now prosperity as we wrap this up. The purpose of penitence and peace with God is my prosperity. And I don't mean that in a selfish way, but I mean it in the sense that, you know, I have a relationship with God based on my, my acceptance of Jesus Christ as my, uh, as my deliverer, as my savior. I have uh, put my faith in him. I have repented of my sins and the direction that I was going in in life. I have confessed him to be Lord of my life. And I have been buried with him in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of my sins, according to the Bible. And so I understand that peace, um, God, when I come to that peace and through a penitent heart, then the only thing is fellowship with God which is my prosperity. Peace and prosperity are two sides of the same coin. Just know, however, that prosperity is far more than money. In fact, true prosperity has nothing to do with money at all. No matter how devastating our present situation may be, our hope and our trust is in the Lord. His resources are endless, and he can work in the, in, in, in the life of any person to bring them his peace and his prosperity. My prosperity is that I am no longer captive to the will of my sins. You're going to do it, do it God's way. My prosperity is I found my hope. In the blood of Jesus, he set me free to obey his commandments, his word, and to live up to the hope of his promises. This is my prosperity, to know Jesus in the pardoning of my sins and to have a testimony to tell anyone, listen, to have a testimony to tell anyone, this is what God was saying when he told Israel, seek me while I may be found. He was saying to them, if I deliver you, you have a testimony. Tell somebody. Talk about what God has done. And don't try to, you can't talk for me and I can't talk for you. Talk about what God has done for you. Tell somebody that God has blessed you and tell somebody about the prosperity and the peace and the relationship that you have with God. Tell somebody about the pardoning of your sins. Tell somebody that you've been delivered from darkness of the world into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Have a testimony 
to tell anyone who will hear it that the Lord has a life for you far that exceeds any life that you have here and now. I am a witness. And the evidence that, I, that, that to what I am testifying even now is my experience in the Lord. No one can testify for me. And I have no, a song in my heart because the Lord has been gracious to me. Simply said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. The Lord's word and work is his salvation of my life. His word has brought me to see the truth of my sins and transgressions apart from his plans and purpose for me. His mercy has allowed me to see his purpose and to come to repentance. The penitent heart is what his word will do, will bring the heart to penitence. Repentance is an ongoing practice that increases faith. And I know this because God has put his word in motion in scripture and in my heart. First John 1 and 9. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, as I walk by faith and as we walk by faith, as you walk by faith, as we all walk by faith, we now have a savior that we can serve who is Jesus, who is a faithful advocate. First John chapter two, before God, the father, he doesn't want me to sin. But if I do, if I do, the Bible says we have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the expiation. He paid the blood guilt for my sins. He paid the price for me. He is the expiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Penitence, peace, and prosperity. If you want prosperity in Christ, then you got to realize that it can't be in the things that you find in this world, but you got to seek God while he may be found. That might be the reason why you're here. So you can look for him, find him, search him out. Give your heart to him. Turn it over to him. And, you know, there's nothing like a good pandemic to make you think that you got to look around and understand it. Well, maybe I'm not in control after all. Maybe there's something invisible that's trying to get me and I need to find something and get invisible to protect me. Let me look for the living God. Let me find the Lord. Let me give my heart to him and let me understand penitence that brings me to my knees. Let me understand peace that God can give me to pass all understanding. Even in the face of death, I am prepared to die and to go and to live with the Lord. And then finally, the prosperity. There's nothing like fellowship with God. And if you don't have fellowship with God today, you need it right now. Let me help you understand that you're not going to get it just because you say you want it. If you're going to come to the Lord who is sovereign, you've got to come on his terms. For he is the sovereign Lord. And he says, come by faith. For he that has faith in him is the one who we deliver. So faith comes by hearing and, and hearing by the word of God. For without faith it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he rewards them that diligently seek him. Understand faith is the way. Not only faith, but we must repent. Have a, come with a heart ready when the word permeates you and it, and it convicts you and it will because it is the living word. It meets you where you are. It knows what to do with you and God knows too. And the power of that word is that God has sent it and he brings about the effects that he needs to bring. Understand, you've got to turn from whatever life that you're leading that's taking you in the direction away from God. Put on a mask. No, let me not go there. Understand. Come to faith, walk with him, turn to live for him, confess him to be the savior of your life, appreciate what he's done, and be, worried, be, be willing to be buried and to go wherever he leads. If he says be baptized, repent, and be baptized for the remission of your sins, then why wouldn't you be baptized for the remission of your sins? It's pointless to fight with God. But if you give your way to him, he will deliver. 
no questions asked, everything down, done, and over. And so today, we encourage you, call us at Cypress. We'll be there for you. <laughs> we'll baptize you today, tomorrow, tonight, to yesterday. We'll bring you to the water. We'll teach you, too. We'll help you understand more. But if you want Christ in your life, you've got to come God's way. And it's written in the Bible, his word. It's that word that's going to bring us to the faith and repentance and confession and baptism that he wants to see for those who obey him. Let us bow in prayer, please. Father, we are so thankful to you. We're so thankful to know that you are the God of heaven. The God who has looked into our affairs from the beginning and even before the beginning. The God who laid down the foundations of the world, the earth, and called man from the dust of the ground. You gave us one responsibility that we failed. And in the consequence of that, you said that we would die or face death, and we have so brutally, physically, spiritually, intellectually. We face death on every side, each and every day. We know that we are separated from you because of how floundering we are in the world, in the darkness of the world. Satan runs rampant and he rules in the hearts of so many men on so many levels in so many ways. And we can't even distinguish which way is up and which way is down or what is truth and what is a lie or what is right and what is wrong. And we wonder, dear Lord, is there hope for a man? For we know that all have sinned and come short of your glory. But we also know that Christ Jesus came to the earth to bear our sins, to take upon him the punishment of our death sentence because of sin and because of our disobedience. May you allow his, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Serve us, Father. Serve us in ways that can help us to understand you more. But most importantly, serve us in ways to help us seek you and to make decisions that lead us to you, to guide us to walk in your steps and in your light. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have. And we pray for those who are in uh, members of the Lord's body and who have accepted Christ as their Savior. And we pray that you'll strengthen those who need you in the pardoning of their sins. We know that we have a long way to go in understanding you and appreciating what you've done. And we also pray that you'll give us voice to those who need to hear and to know and to understand what your word means and how it brings us to life. Father, forgive us of our sins and bless those who are, who are uh, unable to overcome the perils of the darkness of the world. May your, may your gospel continue to go out and permeate the world. May the light of the Lord be that which shines in this dark place and give us hope. Help us to understand penitence, peace, and prosperity in the Lord. For these are the things that we are thankful to know and to have and to receive because of you, because of what you've done, and because of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.